chapter 14 tonight. And um, I'm not going to preach on complaining tonight. But in our passage, the subject comes up once again. And um, we, uh, we want to, um, I just, you know, frame out what to preach on tonight. And, of course, there's always something to preach on. Amen? And, um, you know, there's, there's never a want of text. Uh, but I wanted to preach, you know, what the Lord had to preach on. I've been kind of hung up here in the book of Numbers now for a little while. And I began to, to study and, and I just made a few observations here. And... Um, you know, was just reminded about some things. And I, I wrote some things down this afternoon I thought uh, would be a help to us. Uh, and I think very timely for our church right now. Uh, you know, we're facing battles. When we face battles, I didn't, I, mean, there, I just, just, I, I wrote down um, six statements. And there's, there's probably three times as many you can make from this study here. But I just wrote down some things I thought would be good for us to remember as we face battles. But you know, um, by the time you get to this place in the scripture, um, Israel has, of course, gone to Sinai. They've got the Ten Commandments. Um, they were there a year as they prepared the tabernacle. Uh, of course, the Golden Calf episode was there. Uh, but they got the Ten Commandments. Um, they got the pattern for the tabernacle. They, they, made, they made all the furniture. They got everything together. They got set up. And they were going to move on into Canaan. So as they make their journey, uh, you know, of course, Sunday's text, you know, in the morning service was about the murmuring, uh, the stupid sin, amen. Uh, the sin of stupidity was that of uh, complaining. And, um, and so we, we preached out Numbers chapter 11. When you get over here and um, God tells them to send some folk into the, into the land to spy it out. And um, so they go in there and uh, of course, you know what happened. The 12 came back, and 10 said you can't do it, and two of them said you could. Joshua and Caleb, uh, both of them uh, stood firm on that. And, uh, and we're going to pick up our reading there uh, where uh, Caleb steals the people in verse 30. We begin our reading in uh, Numbers chapter 13, actually, in verse 30. But I want us to take a moment, and I, as we pray, I want us to put ourselves... Uh, in the shoes of, of Israel during this, as we call it, the Kadesh Barnea episode. This was where they had to make a decision. Am I going to go into the promised land or am I going to wander in the wilderness? And our church is really at the same place. You know, I think we pretty well understood that after Sunday night. And, and we... Uh, of course, we decided we're going into the promised land. We didn't articulate that way, but that's what we decided when we were going to the promised land. And uh, there's some lessons to be learned, I think, to invigorate our spirit just a little bit from this, this passage tonight to help us not to make the same stupid mistakes that so many churches do and so many people do. And that is to turn back in the day of battle. I mean, we don't need to do that. Let's pray. Lord, help us tonight, tonight, Lord, not to be like Ephraim and turn back in the day of battle. Help us, Lord, as we look to this passage tonight and study uh, the statements that the Spirit of God recorded for us concerning Israel, things they did and didn't do, and uh, help us to learn from it when we face the battle and face uh, the Kadesh Barnea experiences in our life from time to time. Lord, we ask you to forgive us of our sin tonight and fill us with our spirit. Lord, we look at others and get judgmental at times and we say, I don't understand something and we mutter things under our breath and think about how somebody or, or a group of people or a situation could happen this or that way. And Lord, we just soon forget that if that's us, but by your grace. And I pray you'd help us tonight, wherever we're at in our walk with you, that you'd help us move forward. I pray there'll be somebody tonight not saved among us and get that settled in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Begin reading verse 30 of chapter 13. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, 
for we are well able to overcome it. Now, he didn't say it was going to be easy. He used that word what? Overcome. Great Commission Baptist Church is going to have to overcome. Amen? Amen. Where that means some folk need to overcome that lack of faith and time, or overcome that lack of time management and be more faithful, or overcome the all the excuses and things that so conveniently present themselves on Sunday morning, on Sunday night, and on Wednesday night. And it never happens to you on Monday night or Tuesday night or Thursday night or Friday or Saturday. It's only on Sunday and Wednesday. Or anytime something needs to come up to serve God, uh, you know, it's always something convenient to hold you back. Now listen, I've been guilty of that, same as you, but we got to be overcomers, Amen. But the men that went up with him said, we, we be not able to go up against the people, for they are what? I tell you what, excuses can be strong sometimes, can't they? Financial situations can be very strong. Not because you have a lot of wealth and come from a position of strength in that realm, but I'm talking about, uh, you know, uh, the problems that come up because you need money. That can be a strong, addictions can be strong. Or folk in our church dealing with addictions, and uh, before you point your finger at somebody like that and say, "Man, I, you know," I tell you, you got a merit. Could be you. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, "The land that which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants." Now that was a lie. Yes, it was. Mm -hmm. There ain't nothing in the passage at all that the Spirit of God recorded for us that would indicate that the land eats up people. <laughs> there ain't nothing in there said that. Now I know the imagery, I know the imagery that they're trying to, to get across. I get that same as you. But there's still there's nothing there, there's nothing there that would indicate that the land eats up the people. <laughs> if that were the case, there would be nobody there. Now look what it says. And all the people that we saw in it were men of great stature. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak. Now it's amazing how, how they specify who these people were. Evidently these old boys are some well-known people. I mean these guys were known worldwide I suppose. Because I mean every time you hear them guys mention the sons of Anak, I mean they're mentioned by name. These guys were tall people. Okay, and which were uh, come of the giants, and we were in our own sight. Mm -hmm. I underline my Bible own right there. O W, and that's not Oprah Winfrey's network. Okay, that's uh, uh, that's uh, uh, we were in our own sight uh, as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. That was that was uh, that was that was a lie right there. Now. Kind of like selling some of that reporting I watched on TV as it went down today. It sounds a lot the same there. Of course, anyhow. And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and, and, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said to them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt. And notice that exclamation mark. I mean, that, that wasn't a casual statement. I mean, they meant it. And they meant it with enthusiasm. Or uh, would God we had died in this wilderness? Now, just stop and think about what these rascals were saying. They would rather die as a lost person, so to speak, or die as a believer in the wilderness experience than to go in and have to fight battles in the promised land. And that's what they're saying. And wherefore hath the Lord brought us into this land to fall by the sword that our wives and our children speak? Boy, that's a slap in the face of God. I mean, he got you this far. He can't get you into Canaan. Were it not better for us to return to Egypt? And they said to one another, let us make a captain and let us return... And Man, they, they had a coup going on. Mm -hmm. Now, regardless of what you think about the stuff going on in our, in our country today, uh, 
James Comey and whoever else them, them rascals that was trying stuff, they, they ain't got nothing on these people right here. <laughs> Man, they make no bones about it. They didn't hide it in the corner. They didn't discuss it amongst themselves. They said, hey, they just made it plain. We're going we're gonna to find somebody to lead us back to Egypt. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all this assembly of the congregation of Israel, the children of Israel, and Joshua the son of Nun, and Caleb the son of Jephthah, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes, and they spake all of the com a company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it is an exceeding good land. If the Lord delight in us, and he will bring us into this land, and give it us, a land which floweth with milk and honey, only rebel not against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Notice this statement. Their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. But all the congregation bade stone them with stones, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation before all the children of Israel. God showed up and set some things right. You know, when you and I face battles, we come to the proverbial Kadesh Barnea. Either we're going to stand firm and face the battle and go through it, or we're going to cower down and won't go back and wallow around in our misery or, or whatever it is. And most of the battles in my life where I find myself cowering down and won't turn back, if, if I was honest about it, I'd have to say that it's just because I feared something or someone. And if we take a step back and think about the many decisions we make day by day, are we making decisions based upon faith or are we making decisions based upon fear? Now you ask yourself that question. Let me... Let me just make some observations here and, and just let it be what they may, okay? If you go back in, in, in verse number 33 of Numbers chapter 13, and there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. Remember, here's something I wrote down. Remember that things are not always what they appear to be. Now, Satan loves to paint a picture in front of you and I that is not necessarily reality. Mm -hmm. were, they, were there giants there? Absolutely. Were the, sons, the, the infamous sons of Anak there? Absolutely. Were they tall and strong and, and had a lot of military prowess? Absolutely. But the problem was they saw the strength of the giants and they failed to recognize the strength of God. I mean, how soon people forget that a whole army of people, and in that day, the Egyptian army was a, it was a force to be reckoned with. And that entire army was drowned in the Red Sea by the hand of God. Now, they saw that. And now they're wanting to cower back and go back into slavery into Egypt. They're willing to sell their soul and go back to Egypt or wander in the wilderness and die like so many others did of unbelief. They're willing to do that rather than stand up to the giants that they saw in the land. Things are not always what they appear to be. Our perception may not necessarily be reality. How many times... My wife has lectured me on that, not using those exact words, but using southern wording and the eyebrow thing and the, the inflection of her voice and that sort of thing. I mean, how many times she has done that to me? Now, I want you to think about that. I can't do this. Why? Well, uh, 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 if you start writing down everything, you can't even make a list. Well, I can't type. I can't volunteer for service. I can't show up. I can't be faithful. I can't tell anyone how to be saved. I can't 
read it. I can't go out door to door. I can't do this and I can't do that. I can't live for God. I can't get victory over this sin. I can't stop passing. I can't stop my, my bad eating habits. I can't stop my bad spending habits. I can't, I can't, I can't. You know what? As long as you say you can't, you won't. Did we get that tonight? Yeah. Now, I'll tell you what. We've discussed some things, some pretty heavyweight things on Sunday night. And, and I, we gave facts. And we gave reality. I mean, it's not a matter of perception. There's reality there. But we're, I think we're able to overcome those things by faith. Amen? And are they some giants? Absolutely. From the time we started uh, partnering with Fellowship Track League, boy, I mean, before then, I, as I told somebody, I, we was on cruise control. I mean, man, we were rolling right along, steaming right along. And we, I mean, weren't that many battles, weren't nothing. But just as soon as we started getting them tracks out, I'm going to tell you what, the, the gates of hell was opened up against us. Amen. Now, what does that tell you? Mm -hmm. It tells you we're doing something right. right. It tells us that we're, we're nosed in the right direction. It tells us that we need to keep moving forward. Amen? Yep. And, and, and don't let the, the roar of Satan and don't let the, the noise and the clamor of the battle discourage you and get you to thinking and get your perception out of, out of whack with reality. Does that make sense to everybody? Oh, yeah. And not only do we notice that, but I, I said number two here, don't allow your unmet expectations to cloud your judgment. Look at verse one. And all the congregation, and listen, after this report was given, all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried. Now think about how many millions of people that is. Now I've heard a room full of family cry at a hospital before or in a funeral home before. I've, I've sat in the living room with people and they just go to wailing. I've been there. I, I, that is the awfulest sound in the world to hear people uh, crying when they lose a loved one or something. You know what I'm saying? Or somebody's been arrested or... Someone is sick and they take. I mean, I tell you what, when people just unload, buddy, and they're crying, that is a that's a hard thing to deal with. Mm -hmm. Invariably, there's somebody with a high shrieking <laughs> shrill that just makes the the blood marry in your spine just 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 chatter. You know what I'm saying? But you know, these people cried. And the whole and the people wept that night. So no matter where Moses went in the camp to get a clear head, no matter where Aaron might have went, or Joshua or Caleb or their families, no matter where they went in the camp that night to try to get along with God, all they could hear it weren't the, the voice of the birds, and it, it weren't the night air that the, as the wind might blow that night through the camp, uh, or the uh, the flaps of the tents, or the 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 waving of the banners of their standard uh, 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 for their, their tribe. That, that's not what they heard. They heard the weeping of people who were overcome by fear. Mm -hmm. Their unmet expectations clouded their judgment. They thought they would get into Canaan a different way. Canaan was not a type of heaven as the songwriters like to make it. Canaan is a type of the victorious Christian life. And victory does not come without battles. Amen. Victory does not come in your life without battles. You can't lose weight without a fight. You can't, you can't get victory over financial issues without a fight. You can't get victory over sexual sins without a fight. You can't get victory over a, a, a nasty mouth without a fight. You can't get... Victory over family problems and relationship problems without a fight. And I don't mean a fist fight. I'm talking it's a battle. And victory comes because of a battle. Amen. And they wanted Canaan. They wanted all the blessings of Canaan. They didn't want to fight for it. They didn't want to sacrifice for it. Hey, listen, they had forgotten what God had done for them. They had forgotten about the Red Sea crossing. They forgot about the water coming out of the rock. They forgot about that manna. They forgot about all the times God provided them. You'll find in chapter 14, God tells Moses, these ten times they murmured against me. These ten, God was keeping a score. God kept a record of every single event that Israel had balked at his leadership. 
and was ready to get rid of all of them. Don't allow your unmet expectations. And listen, emotions can distort our thinking. I was talking to a preacher years ago. I believe it was in South Carolina. In fact, no, it wasn't. In Union, South Carolina, there was a preacher's fellowship there. And there was this older man of God there. We was eating the supper that night. Of course, man, I tell you what, they know how to eat food down there, boy. Man, I ate so much. <coughs> won't go into all that. But we were sitting there. And uh, we was talking. And, uh, and, this, and I don't know why this guy's sharing his stuff with me. He's just running his mouth, I suppose. But he made a, made a statement to me I thought was rather intriguing just stuck with me. Now, I forget a lot of stuff. But what he said to me stuck in, with me. He said, you know, Andrew, he says, some preachers are like a roller coaster. One minute they're up, one minute they're down. He said, while other preachers are, just seem like they just, this smooth sailing. He said, that's because of personality. He says, I, he says, it sounds like you want him up and down, guys. He says, I'm just, I've just always been kind of like this. He said, each one has their, their own challenges and things. But he says, you've got to be aware of that. He said, well, he saw men of God over the years that just weren't aware. Because if you're just like this, you know, there's a danger that you just won't do nothing. You'll just, you'll just settle in and, you know, you don't get up and down. You don't really get stirred up. You get apathetic at your personality. People that are up and down are typically passionate people. They're driven people. Now, you can get driven into the ditch if you ain't careful. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. So no matter what your personality type, he was saying just be aware of how God made you. That's, that's basically what the guy was trying to say. Now that's a pretty good that's a pretty good statement. He just was just running his mouth, was just, you know, jabbering and carrying on waiting to get food, you know what I'm saying? And um, but but it comes into play right here tonight. I mean, these people were crying. I mean, Canaan is right there. I mean, they get, I mean, they, they're, they're right near the Jordan River. I mean, man, they're not too far out from going where for hundreds of years God has promised that brought the posterity of Abraham to go in there and he was going to give them that land. I mean, they've been talking. And man, these guys are on the precipice of going in. And what happens? You can't do it. Not only that, number three, remember that complaining or murmuring is usually unproductive and leads to deeper sin. Look at verse 2 and verse 3. And all the children of Israel murmured against who? Moses and Aaron. They're taking out their hostilities and frustrations on who? The men of God. And the whole congregation said to them, Would God would have died in the land of Egypt? Well, I, I, I just can't get past that. Wherefore hath the Lord brought us into this land to fall by the sword, that our wives and children be a prey, we're not better return to Egypt. Isn't that something? You know, when you start murmuring and complaining, you can very possibly begin to despise the blessings of God. Because you're so focused on what you don't have. And you're so focused on the fear and the frustration, the clouded judgment. You're so focused on all of the, 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 the stuff that you can't enjoy the luster of what's going around you. There's been a time or two in my life when I was in the midst of deep trial. I mean deep. I mean you get up in the morning and it's just on you. You know what I'm saying? It's just there. To all of a sudden just be able to hear a bird chirp. And just for a few minutes you get to focusing on the sunshine or the clouds of the sky. You know, I like to look at the clouds, you know. Or you, or all, you can just focus on that bird right outside the window. And your mind just escapes just for a few minutes. You know what I'm saying? Boy, it's a blessing. But, but, when, but when you're murmuring and complaining, you can't even do that. See, they had have, they have had such a bad problem with complaining and murmuring and muttering under their breath. They was willing to sell their soul. They was willing to die 
like the unbelievers, that mixed multitude who come out of Egypt, they was willing to, to, to die an awful death in the wilderness than to go into Canaan. It does not make any sense whatsoever. But you know what? That's us, but by the grace of God. I wrote something else down. Don't forsake proven counsel and leadership. Look at verse 4. And they said to one another, let us make a captain and let us return into Egypt. Man, you talk about a coup. Talk about a mutiny. Talk about a revolt. Listen, that mess in Cuba years ago with Castro ain't got nothing on this. What's going on in Venezuela right now? I'm trying to change governments down there. That ain't got nothing on this. Oh, preacher, you're just embellishing. No, I'm not. Listen, this ain't about tear gas. This ain't about uh, trying to overthrow com communism and stuff like that. Let me tell you, this right here was a revolt against God Himself. God brought this nation out of Egypt. He is going to displace those nations that are wicked and have gone to seed there in Canaan. God is going to displace that crowd because they have been disobedient. <clears throat> Excuse me. And God is going to use Israel as the sword because of the sin of those nations. And God's going to displace them. And God told each or told Israel eventually, and listen, you can stay in the land as long as, as you listen to me, but as soon as you don't, I'm going to have other nations drive you out. Just, just basically just like what they had been used to drive those other nations out. And that's what eventually what happened. But this was a mutiny against God. This, this was a revolt. This was a coup. They're willing to stone Moses and Aaron right there at Kadesh Barnea. They're willing to do it right there. <clears throat> then to go into Canaan. By faith. How many churches? How many churches? Though they didn't pick up a stone literally and throw it and hit their preacher upside the head. But how many people have done that or at least went through it in their mind because they would not go on by faith. How many people have left the church and jumped ship because they couldn't agree with something that really didn't amount to anything and go off to find out greener grass? Let me tell you something. You best be careful about looking for greener pastures and greener grass. I have found it to be the truth that the greenest grass usually grows right over the septic tank. Right. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Or, if you comb down through the grass just a little bit, you'll find a mound of manure in there. That's right. Now, if that's what you want, have right at it. Amen? we got to walk on by faith. we got to go on into Canaan. <clears throat> Don't forsake proven counsel and leadership. Boy, if there was ever somebody who they all have been holding on to and praying for, that was Moses. Yeah. Moses... Hey, they had abandoned and was willing to abandon Moses right there at the beginning. And Moses wasn't willing to abandon them. In fact, you'll find in chapter 14 that there's a conversation that goes on. Man, they're getting ready to throw stones. And God comes down. The glory of that cloud filled that tabernacle. And God made His glory known there. And He started talking to Moses. It was done in a public way. Now, I want you to get this now. Don't miss this. Moses, Moses is told that he can start over and have another crowd. And Moses wasn't willing to do that. And, of course, this was a test of leadership. I know a lot of pastors say, Lord, just take them off. Just give, I, I'll be glad to do that. Lord, I'll step out of the way. You come right on down through here with a, with a storm or a cloud, light, and whatever. Lord, I'll stay out of the way. And Lord, I went on another crowd that you want me to lead. I, I know a lot of people like that. I've been one of them. Lord, take them all out of here. We'll start over. But don't forsake the council. They was willing to do that. I, I wrote something else down. Be courageous and follow God's leading. Look at verse 5. Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly. Joshua speaks there in verse 6 and verse 7. We've already read this. You look on down um, in verse 8. If the Lord delight in us, He'll bring us into the land. Amen? And here, here's the thing. We need to be courageous. Now, Joshua and Caleb were not courageous because they saw the big cluster of grapes. That's not what made them courageous. 
they got to see the land. And just because they know how it, they wanted that land. I get that. I mean, man, they wanted to get in there. They wanted to, you couldn't get in there quick enough for those guys. I get that. But what made them courageous is they believed God. Yes, sir. See, those two, along with those other ten, had come through the Red Sea. The only difference in, the, in, that, in those guys, the ten and the two, they saw the same stuff. They heard the same thing. They had experienced the same exact situation. The difference in those fellows was this. Two of them believed God and ten of them didn't. Now in this church tonight, there are people sitting among us that believe God and there are some that don't. That's a fact. Any given service, if you want to come to the Great Commission Baptist Church, there are people that hear me preach that believe God and some that don't. That's a fact. That's reality. That's not perception. That's reality. F-A-C-T. Fact. But we, if we're going to face battles and, and, and go into, the, into Canaan, and, and fight these things, we're going to have to be courageous. We're going to just have to take God at His word. Now, I'm going to tell you something. You know, our family is, if there was ever a time the Shane family has to be courageous, it's right now. I promise you that. It's not easy. It's not easy to do that. But you've got to be courageous. Last of all, when facing battles, we need to remember that opposition will not prevail against God. Now look at the last part of verse 9. I saw this day I about had a shout and fit. Look what it said there. Their defense is departed from them. Who told Joshua that? I don't think anybody told him that. I just believe that he believed that. It didn't matter how strong them giants were. It didn't matter what they had relied upon to make them successful in battles before. Talking about the sons of Ladak. It, I mean, evidently that was the, that was the, the, the biggest crowd they was worried about was in giants. And they heard so much. And, and Joshua is saying, their defense is departed from them. Their defense. Now, I, I can't be for sure about this, but do you remember in the book of Joshua where they go in there and Rahab tells them how the people of Jericho have been for years and years and years worried about this crowd out in the wilderness. Remember that? We heard how God brought y'all out of Egypt, destroyed that army. We heard about that. We heard about how these other armies were fell before you, and there was no more strength in them. This big walled city. This impermeable object. Of, I mean, Jericho had a reputation, friend. And I'm going to tell you something. God had already troubled them. And had for a long time. And I'll tell you something else. Joshua's already seen it right here. Their defense is departing from them. And the Lord is with us. Fear them not. And I got to thinking about this. I'm just going to make a few statements here and I'll be done. Now, don't, don't, don't miss this. When you and I are facing battles, one of the biggest obstacles that we have is that fear of the unknown and fear of what's going to happen if. Yeah. Right? Do we not all get there? Oh, yeah. What 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 continues? You know what that is? That's just, that's that natural desire in us to what? Survive. Survive. Survival mode. I've told folks I'm in survival mode right now. Okay, I get that. I understand it more now than I ever have. Okay, when you're facing a battle, whatever that thing you might be, whether it be in your family, in the place of employment, in the church, in your own addictions and demons, as they say, that you're battling with, whatever, whatever it is, whatever venue you want to talk about, when you're facing a battle, got to make a decision or te facing temptation, whatever, don't forget that whatever that fear is, Whatever that stronghold is, you really don't have to worry about their defense. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Don't get
get, don't, don't miss that. Whatever that fear is that's keeping you from taking that step forward, you've got to remember, and I've got to remember, that, hey, listen, God is well able to take care of that. And he will. Do y'all get that? I was reading about David's mighty men this week in 1 Chronicles. I was reading there about how this, this guy slew this many and this guy slew this many. You know how come those guys could do that? Because they realized that God was with them and the defense of that opposition was nil. Was there a battle? Yes. Did they get bruised and cut on? Yes. Did they bleed? Yes. Did it hurt? Yes. But they were victorious in the end. Why? Because they walked on by faith. And I'm just, we're just clearing off a spot here tonight. And we're going to have to practice this week what we've been preaching. God is able to help every single one of us regardless of our age, regardless of our physical stamina, regardless of how much money we got in our bank accounts, regardless of what clothes we have on our back, regardless of how smart we are, regardless of any of the things that we like to use as measuring sticks or barometers. Listen, whatever that might be, God is able. When we can face battles, we can face the Kadesh Barnea experiences in our life, and we can go on into Canaan. That is reality. But we have to walk on by faith. Amen? Just to recap, remember that things are not always what they appear to be. Don't allow your unmet expectations to cloud your judgment. Remember that complaining is usually unproductive and leads into deeper sin. Don't forsake proven counsel and leadership. Be courageous and follow God's leading. If God says go, then go! And remember that opposition will not prevail against God. It might prevail against you and your strength and your plan, but it won't prevail against Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, that makes me want to say amen. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. All right. Here, all hearts clear tonight. Let's have a word of prayer.